Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, welcome to the cabin, everybody. We're decorating the cabin, getting ready for Christmas. I'm going to do a little Christmas baking. First, I'm putting up my tree. If you hear wind noise on this, it's because I had to step outside of the door to get far enough back to get the tree in the shot. And I don't know if you can tell there or not, but that tree is suspended from the ceiling. And there is a reason for that. I'm not actually celebrating a Victorian Christmas, but the Christmas tree originates in Germany. And uh, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert, from Germany, introduced it to England. And that is why we now put up Christmas trees, because Queen Victoria did it, the whole world starting doing it. And what I learned last year really surprised me. There was a television series put out by the BBC, and maybe in collaboration with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, too, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a series that comes on once a year for few weeks. I think there have been two seasons so far, and this winter will be the third season. Last winter, it showed them celebrating Christmas at Windsor, Windsor Castle, and the preparations for Christmas and all that stuff, and then Christmas morning, and they showed the tree, and the tree was suspended from the ceiling. That was how they did it, um, with candles on it, of course. Um, even back back then, in, in early on in Victoria's reign, uh, none of the palaces or castles or anything had electric power. Uh, and here on Campobello, we didn't have electric power until the late 40s. Uh, the, the house that I grew up in, uh, my parents' home, um, was one of the earlier houses built that was wired as it was being built. And uh, that was the late 40s. So. But anyway, those are real candles. I don't know if I'm going to get the courage to light them or not. I never have. I've had them for many years, and they've been on my Christmas trees numerous times, but I've never lit them. My parents always told me, you know, the, some of the old Christmas stories, that their tree had candles, and it was lit just once during the Christmas season, usually Christmas Eve. And you enjoyed the lights on the tree for a half hour or so, the candles, before they, they watched the tree carefully, of course, so the house didn't burst into flames. But what follows here now is a picture of, a couple of pictures, I guess, not too different, of what Victoria's tree would have looked like. These are not uh, the actual tree. These are colored photographs of a, an exposition that was done at Windsor Castle Christmas exposition a few years ago and they suspended the tree like Victoria did so I'll do some more commenting as you look at those well, Queen Victoria's tree would not have looked exactly like this uh, matter of fact our current Queen Queen Elizabeth's tree did not look like this until a few years ago that's a tree from a tree farm that's been pruned a Christmas tree farm and I have seen the Queen in the recent years standing by a tree that does look like that but she used to use a tree that looked more like what I've got in the cabin a natural tree cut out of the forest with space between the, the limbs however this is this basically the same photograph, but this will eventually sort of pan out so that you get a, a closer look at it. I know I have seen a black and white photograph of Queen Victoria, Prince Albert, and their children around the suspended Christmas tree. But can I find it again? No. I have searched and searched and searched using every term that I can think of on the internet, and I cannot come up with it, so we'll just have to do with with this uh, modern version of what they think it looked like. I'm going to add a few more decorations, but not many more to my little tree. It's uh, not going to take too much weight on its spindly little branches. It's a, a balsam fir tree that I, I cut here on my own property, just a little seedling tree that popped up somewhere. And, uh, the branches are quite slight, so it won't take a lot. But anyway, that explains what we're doing here having a Victorian Christmas of sorts, I guess. 
Well, before we go back to the cabin, this is Christmas when I was a child. That's me and my older brother. Um, I, there were three of us children, my sister, myself, and my older brother. I look, I'm looking at that photograph and thinking I'm probably about four years old. And if that's the case, my sister isn't in it because she was only born about a month before Christmas. Um, she was born in November, and she's uh, four years younger than me. So I'm thinking if I'm a four-year-old there, that's why she isn't in the photograph. But unfortunately, I don't have a photograph of the three of us together at Christmas time. I'm sure there are some somewhere, but I don't, I don't have them or I can't come up with one anyway. But that's what our tree looked like when I was a child. And none of this lavish amount of gifts that children get now. Well, my family couldn't afford it for one thing. But we were just as excited and thrilled with the two or three little gifts that we got and some extra clothing and whatever. I think probably more pleased with it than children are today with the great excess that they seem to get at Christmas time. It's difficult to appreciate all of that at once. Anyway, let's go back to the cabin and carry on decorating and do some cooking. Well, I think I now understand why Prince Albert's suspended Christmas tree never really took off. <laughs> it does have one advantage. You want to put some decorations on the, on the back of it and you're standing at the front, you're just spinning it around. But there's my Charlie Brown Christmas tree. It will remain to be seen whether or not I actually dare to light the candles, so you'll have to stay tuned for that, I guess. Couldn't hold very much, it's such a spindly little thing, but... Well, I haven't had this out of the box in many years. It's my crash, or manger scene, whatever you want to call it. And mine is like a children's Christmas pantomime. All the little characters in it are figures of children. The three kings here. Mary and Joseph, and the Christ child, and shepherds. Oh, I guess back here there's an angel. And the animals, of course. Camel and a donkey and a, a cow. Almost forgotten about the thing. I bet it's been ten years since I got that out. And the three traditional gifts, of course, bought, brought by the three kings or the wise men were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I don't have a big lump of gold, but I, years ago, was given frankincense and myrrh. Both frankincense and myrrh are resins from different trees, and they're used in incense. I love the smell of the frankincense. I'm not so crazy about the myrrh. If that shows up or not. Just little beads of, of uh, dried resin. I'm going to put some on the wood stove here in a minute. The myrrh is a bit darker. Once again, it's just little bits of... It's resin from trees that grow mostly, I guess, in the Middle East. dark over in the corner by the stove, but I guess you can see the little bit of smoke coming off it. That's several pieces of uh, frankincense and a couple of pieces of myrrh. And it did not take long for it to perfume the cabin. I love the smell, especially as I said, the frankincense. When I was a child, there was an elderly couple that lived on, the, on a hill next to where I live, but it was only a short walk, and I always liked to go visit and the lady had uh, frankincense that she showed me. And as a treat, she would sometimes put it on her wood stove so I could smell it. Well, I'm not really certain, but I think my mother gave me these many years ago for Christmas. Three Father Christmas candlesticks. And I have had those out and used them many times. I don't want to get Father Christmas too close. 
to the tree. This one here is a bit dangerously close, but I'm only going to leave it lit for a second or two here anyway. And my Christmas stocking is hung, <laughs> not by the chimney with care, as the old rhyme goes. Hanging it by the chimney would not be with care. There's a lot of heat goes up the chimney here in the cabin. It would be quite a fire hazard. Well, I think that's most of my decorating done out here. And now I'm going to do some cooking. But some of the decorating, of course, has to be cleared away if I'm going to do some cooking. It's a very small cabin. But I think we're ready for Christmas. Well, does any of this look familiar? <laughs> if you watched my last video uh, sometime in mid-November, we had the snowstorm and the cabin looked just about exactly like this. Well, since then, we've had mild weather, all of that snow melted, and we got all of this snow last night. So it's beginning to look like we're going to have a white Christmas. You never know from one day to the next what the weather is going to be like here. Well, I'm going to do some of the Christmas cooking while I'm out here, of course. The first thing I'm going to make is my cranberry sauce. That is one package, a 12 ounce package, 340 grams of fresh cranberries. And uh, they've been washed and, and picked through. I don't think I've ever bought a package that didn't have some that were going soft in it somewhere, so they've all been eliminated. One cup of water and one cup of sugar. A very simple process. There's enough pectin in cranberries that you certainly don't need to do anything else and it will set up quite nicely. You bring it to a boil and then reduce the heat some and let it simmer and boil for 10 minutes it always says on the bag but I always let mine go longer because I want it to be firmer. If you only do it for 10 minutes it's uh, well not runny but it's it's not as nice and firm and spreadable. I like mine spreadable because mostly I eat it on toast I love cranberries on cranberry sauce on toast. Sort of sour and sweet all the same time. So bring you back for a look at that when they start boiling. Well, the next thing I'm making is called peanut butter balls. I guess you probably would classify it as a candy. There's no baking involved. It's a sweet anyway. We usually have them around Christmas time. There is a cup of confectioner's sugar, icing sugar in that bowl already. I'm following that with a cup of peanut butter. I'm using just the soft peanut butter. You could also use the, the crunchy with the whole nuts in it if you wanted. I'm just using what I happen to have at the house, I guess. Half cup of chopped walnuts. I need a half cup of chopped dates. So I won't make you watch me chop a whole the half cup of dates, but we'll get started here, I guess. I buy this brand a lot. You pick. You can see the, the label buy it on Amazon for a lot of different kinds of dried fruit. Uh, it seems to be the most economical and I find the quality to be quite good. I have noticed with the dates, however, they're supposed to be pitted and every once in a while you find one that's still got a stone in it, but I guess that could happen with any brand. So I'll bring you back when I have a half cup of dates chopped up and ready to go. That's a half cup of dates, chopped. Now it's two tablespoons of butter, which doesn't have to be melted. I have melted mine because it wasn't, it was too hard to, to blend in. And I think there's a generous two tablespoons there, so I won't put it all in. Now this just gets combined thoroughly. Oh, 
I'll bring you back when I get all that icing sugar worked into the peanut butter mixture. Well, I guess as you can see, the cranberries have just come to the boil. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but they, they're popping like popcorn too. Each individual cranberry will, will pop. There's a couple of things that you can do with this when it's finished. Some people put it through a sieve or a strainer to remove the skins. I happen to like it whole, so I, I don't do that. I, I just put it in a container once it's cooled down and keep it in the refrigerator. It doesn't last that long around my house. It's a nice simmer anyway. It just started and it says to let it go for 10 minutes. I let it go for 15, maybe 20. So I'll bring you back when it's finished. Well, the next step in making peanut butter balls is to make the balls, I guess. I'm using a small ice cream scoop. I will still have to pick each one up by hand and and round it, but using the scoop you sort of get the same portion each time anyway. You can make these any size that you want to make and you can uh, do it entirely by hand, you don't need to have the scoop. So once I've done all the scooping I'll bring you back. And this is the part where it starts to get a little messy. You could put these in the refrigerator first to firm them up a bit. But I don't have a refrigerator here at the cabin, so I have mixed up, uh, I don't know, half a cup of icing sugar and a tablespoon or two of water just to make a very loose glaze into that. And then they go into coconut. I'm using... Um, unsweetened coconut. There's enough sweet here already in my opinion. Now you just try to make it as ball shaped as possible. At this stage they're very soft but in the refrigerator uh, they firm up very quickly. I didn't count. I have to count when I finish I guess to see how many this made. This is about the size that we usually make them so if you've got one of these small ice cream scoops you're set to go. So bad as far as being sticky once once you've rolled them in the coconut. I'll just do this one more then I'll bring you back and show you the finished product. sweetened coconut if you wanted but I thought unsweetened might work better so I'll bring you back in a few minutes well I think the sauce is done I say it is anyway I guess what do you know I was thinking that container was probably going to be too small it's just about right This will gel or set up, whatever you want to call it. It will certainly thicken and be be spreadable once it is fully cooled. <laughs> You're looking under the steam. <laughs> I didn't notice the steam coming off. It has steamed up the lens. Sorry about that, but the fog seems to have lifted. As I said, this will set up quite nicely. Be spoonable and probably spreadable. As I said, I like it mostly on toast. I do eat it some with, with meals, but uh, I like it as breakfast spread on toast. The uh, meat and meatballs, I was going to say, the peanut butter balls are going into the big refrigerator. They're out sitting on the doorstep on this cold day to firm them up a little bit. So I'll bring those in in a few minutes and we'll try one. Well, I think I count 16. As I said, you can make these any size you want to make. Make them smaller if you like. I think larger might not be a good idea, but smaller than that would be okay. And they've been out, it's only about, well, uh, freezing, a little bit below freezing here, but they firmed up nicely in the little bit of time that they were out, so 
I'll choose that one as my sample. I haven't made them in a long time, but they're just as I remember them. I keep them in the refrigerator to keep them firm. They'll also freeze very well. So you could make them now and have them whenever you want to have them over the holiday season. Well, I hope you'll give those a try. But next we're going to try baking some cookies. But before I start making sugar cookies, I'll try to show you what I meant by the texture that I like with the cranberry sauce. It's gelled quite nicely and that will spread quite nicely on, on toast or whatever. And that's after about 20 minutes, maybe even a little longer, simmering to reduce the liquid quite a bit. If you only went the 10 minutes that's suggested on the, on the cranberry package, uh, you would have a, a sauce for sure, but it would be almost pourable. It would be loose enough that you could uh, put it in a pitcher or whatever and pour it out. And it's very good. It's not um, overly tart and it's not overly sweet. And just right in my opinion anyway. It's the way I like it. It's sort of a little sour and a little sweet all at the same time. Well, let's make some cookies. And I wanted to mention, I guess, before I close this little clip down, uh, the peanut butter ball recipe is once again something from my mother's little handwritten cookbook and uh, the uh, cranberry recipe is off the package and the uh, sh uh, sugar cookies that I'm going to make <laughs> out of the world's smallest Christmas cookies book I would say isn't that tiny a gift many years ago but I will write them out all three of them will be down below the video on YouTube well, the cookies that I'm going to make are these sugar cookies, which are, are well, relatively thin and, and sort of a crisp cookie. They're not a big, soft sugar cookie. And they show all decorated. Mine will not be all decorated. They will be Christmas shapes. I have a box of uh, Christmas cookie cutters here that I'm going to use. And I'll probably just dust them with icing sugar. I won't be doing all that intricate decorating anyway. That's the Christmas cookie cutters. A gift a number of years ago, and I don't believe I've ever used them before. A holly. I suppose that's a reindeer. Well, maybe that's meant to be a star. I'm not sure. This is more a holly leaf here. A bell. And a Christmas tree. And it starts with half a cup of butter, which I hope has softened enough that I'll be able to cream it. It's been out here quite a while, and the cabin is fairly warm anyway. To the half cup of butter, you add three quarters of a cup of sugar. pre-measured these things before I came out. That's three quarters of a cup of sugar. We'll try our best to cream the two together. I'm not quite sure it's going to happen. I have to wait a little longer for it to soften. Beautiful day out. Minus seven a little while ago, and it's warming up. And this, all this recent snow that we got, that still might all be gone by Christmas. The weekend here, Christmas is next Tuesday. The weekend, Saturday and Sunday, is supposed to be very mild. So, whether we have a a white Christmas or a brown Christmas is yet to be seen, I guess. Brown Christmases are not uncommon here on the coast. You just never know with with our weather here on the coast. It cold one day and warms up the next. I think I'm going to have to wait a bit on this. It's not going to 
cream in there just yet. Still a little too cold, but cut into pieces like that, it should warm up fairly quickly. So I'll just set it aside here and we'll come back when it's ready to be creamed, I guess. Well, that didn't take too long. It's warmed up in here. And now, a half teaspoon of vanilla. And if I can get this to pour, I'm going to use my vanilla paste again. It is slowly coming down. Well, there we go. I'd say that's a generous half teaspoon. One egg. Vanilla smells good. Let's see, that's well combined. A cup and a half of flour, all purpose flour. I believe it's a double check here. teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. that mixture you add one tablespoon of milk. Doesn't seem like a lot of milk. flour I don't know I'm going to. There's more of it when I I need it for a bit before I roll it out. Some more flour will get added in there then. chill this for a bit in my large outdoor refrigerator again before I roll it out. It would work much better if it was the butter had a chance to firm up a little bit first. So half, half an hour, 20 minutes, something like that. And the refrigerator will help. So I'll bring you back when it's time to roll out the cookies. Well, it's been almost an hour in my large refrigerator. I hope I haven't got it too cold. It's quite solid now. We'll see what we can do with it. 
this is half of it. Instructions are to roll it out thinly. The thinner it is, the faster it cooks. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees. And I guess I sort of have that happening. My Coleman camp oven is on the on the burner anyway, just started to heat up. That's quite thin. I'll start with a Christmas tree here. Put the cover in some flour first. Oh. Oops. I'm going to bake them on parchment paper. They're not going to rise very much or grow very big so they can be put quite close together. I forgot to bring a spatula out with me so hopefully a knife will do to get them if they're sticking a little bit. There's two Christmas trees. Let's try a bell. We'll have some holly leaves, I guess. The Coleman oven is quite small, so you know this is the largest pan that I can put in there. So, if you can see my seven, I guess it's seven cookies on that. It says that the recipe should make thirty, but obviously that depends on how thinly you roll them out. Anyway, as soon as the oven is up to temperature, I'll cook the first batch and I'll show you what they look like when they come out of the oven. I'm often asked how close the cabin is to my house, and then some people think that I've been out in the wilderness and they're really disappointed when I tell them the truth. I've never tried to hide the fact that the cabin is on my own property. I have a fairly large property, eight and a half acres, something like that, mostly just natural forest. But the cabin is out here where I have my hoop house and where I do my vegetable gardening in the summertime. And I just noticed this nice sunny afternoon, the front of the house is all lit up with sun so you can see it through the trees so I thought I would in the interest of honesty here I would show you there is my house and I'm at the cabin oh I don't know just a few hundred feet away I have to come out a pathway through the woods to get out here to this area that was cleared years ago for a garden but that is how close my cabin is to the house Well, it's not too bad, I guess. It's starting to get a little brown around the edges, but that's what they said they should happen to them. But so hard to regulate that little camp oven. It went up over 400 degrees before I noticed it and managed to get it back down again. I think they're only in there about six minutes. 
a little over six minutes maybe because the oven was too hot. If I can get them up off of here. It says to cool them on a rack, but these things are so thin I'm just putting them on a plate single layer at a time and they will cool quite quickly. If anybody does have decorating skills, they would be very pretty if they were decorated with frosting and glitter and whatever. But that just is not me. I'm not good at that sort of thing, so I'm not even going to try. But what I do think I will do is just a little sprinkling of confectioner's sugar, icing sugar. Not a great deal. Just a little bit on each one. While they're still hot, and that should make most of it adhere. That's the theory, anyway. Well, I'll get a few more trays of these in and then I'll show you what they look like. Well, there's one thing about the Father Christmas candlesticks. Evidently they're indestructible. I have knocked them on the floor twice since they've been up here. And as near as I can tell, no damage was done. There is candles in the window, real candles. Hi hey everybody, before we close this video down, Angel and I want to take an opportunity to wish everybody a very happy Christmas and to share one of the Christmas cookies. I can't decide if this is meant to be a star or a snowflake or a snowflake that looks like a star. I'll show you the cookies when they're all finished baking here soon. I've got, I guess, one tray in the oven and one more tray to do after I... Uh, did two or three trays. I got the oven regulated enough that I now have the temperature I'm supposed to have. What do you think, dear? you like have one of those? I think they're angel approved. May I have some? <laughs> so I can share these, Dad. There's no raisins in them or anything. Shared the biscuit. Well, in a few minutes we're going to light the Christmas tree. Well, that's the finished plate of cookies dusted with icing sugar. I didn't count, but I'm sure I got more than 30. But then once again, that depends on size and thickness, doesn't it? That's the one that I can't decide. Is that a snowflake or a star? Or a snowflake that looks like a star? Or what is that? But they're quite tasty, and it is a very easy dough to work with. Uh, rolls out nicely. Any of the leftover scraps or whatever go back together and rolls out again very nicely. So if you're looking for an interesting sugar cookie for Christmas, I hope you'll give this one a try. And as I said, I will put the recipes down below the video here.
hope that shows. The only lights in here right now are the candles on the tree and the three Father Christmases in the window. I guess I have them all lit. I think I might have missed one. At least I count nine and there should be ten. And I don't see one there that I missed anyway. But I'm only going to let it go for a few minutes and then I'm putting it out. So. I'll take this opportunity to wish everybody a very happy Christmas. In the words of the poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, better known as The Night Before Christmas. Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs>